Hello. Um, so for this video today, I am going to try to do it all in one take. Um, I'm going to give you a lot of information. You can pause it and go back and, and look at some things I'm doing here. Um, this is really for a, a sphere, and most of you have already uh, completed a sphere in oil, or you um, maybe weren't quite finished or whatever. But so even if you finish a sphere, you might want to do it. Do this. I'm making this kind of optional. Um, if you don't want to do a sphere, you could do a piece of fruit or something, or you could just use um, some of the extra sheet of paper that I gave you. You can cut a sheet off or use part of it just to experiment with watercolors before you start your portrait. And I really recommend that you do that um, because watercolor is very different from, uh, from oil. So uh, even though the paints that we have here um, in this pan include uh, similar to a, an alizarin, you have your secondary colors, you have your orange, Another primary is your yellow. You have your green, which is a, a secondary again. Very similar to your ultramarine blue that you were used to. Uh, this actually is a violet, so it's kind of like that dioxinine purple we had. Something that we hadn't had before is a brown. And then here's a black here. Notice that there's no white. One of the big differences with watercolor is, is that the white comes from the transparency of the paint and then the white of the paper is your white. So you kind of have to plan on that accordingly. So, so this, this doesn't go too long. I'm gonna get going on, um, on this drawing or this painting right away and showing you what we're doing. So I'm taking a bowl and I'm using that for my sphere. It was just a bowl that we had. Uh, and I'm taking a mechanical pencil and I'm very lightly uh, drawing a, um, tracing out this circle, similar to what we did in class. Very, very lightly. Um, once you've done that, oh, I missed a spot there. Once you've done that, um, similar to what we did in class, and again, you don't have to do all this stuff here, but similar to what we did in class is we're gonna put a horizon line back there. Okay, so I'm just gonna use a sheet of paper to kind of create um, a horizon line. Just like that. And then again, we have our cast shadow. So if our, if our light is coming down from this direction here, we've got this cast shadow. And again, just like you did in class, if you wanna go ahead and uh, uh, use a, a photograph off, offline or something, you can do that online. So I know it's hard to see, and you'll see it once I start painting, but I have my circle here that's gonna become my sphere. I have my cast shadow right here. Here's my foreground area, and this will be my background. I'm not gonna have an edge on here. You can draw out a, a perimeter or an edge. When we did it in class, you had the end of the canvas. So this is a little bit different on the paper here. Okay, so I'm gonna sit down and, uh, and just start talking a little bit about watercolor and how you're gonna go about doing it. And some of my suggestions for some things to have on hand when we do this. So your watercolor pan should come with a brush. This is a white nylon bristle brush. You might have to uh, take a little um, water and clean out some of the adhesive and that you can feel it. A little bit of adhesive in the bristles there. Um, we're gonna need a paper towel. Sorry, I forgot a paper towel. So you're gonna need a paper towel um, for a number of reasons and I'll explain that in just a second here. You might even have two paper towels here available. Um, kind of have a clean one off to the side there for you. So I got that glue off my brush there as best I can. Okay, dry my brush out a little bit. Now, with watercolor, I like to have two little jars of water right here. I just use little juice glasses, but you could use old cans or, or jars or whatever that you have <clears throat> in your recycling bin. I've got my pan of uh, colors right here. I have a paper plate. You don't have to have a paper plate, but you can use that as a palette and use it for mixing. Um, if you have an old pie tin or a plastic lid to like a, um, a, a cup or a jar that you had, you could do that too for your mixing. I also have just a sheet of copy paper here where I can test out some of my colors um, before I bring them to my painting here. Now, just like we did in class, I want I want to go ahead and not just stick with like a blue or a green only. I want to kind of make my own custom color. So I'm going to go into this blue right here and you can actually start testing it right away. 
So I can see the value of that blue. For example, if I really um, don't use a ton of water and I get a lot of color going, I can get a pretty opaque color right there. I could go even further. I could get this really deep and dark. Notice with this brush too, I, I can use either a wide stroke or all the way down to a very, very delicate stroke. And that's gonna be useful when we get to our portrait. Okay, now a couple mixing tips. Like if I wanna take some of my blue right here and go like this, and let's say that I the complement of blue is orange. So let's say that I wanna bring a little bit of red into it and a little bit of yellow. Okay, so I kinda of gray it down a bit. Rather than going to my black right away, I'm gonna kinda of make my own little kind of deep blue right there, all right? And I can keep adjusting it as I go. If your colors start to get too mucky in here, you can always take your paper towel at any time and just dab in there, have a garbage can nearby or something so that you can clean out your colors so that you're not cross-contaminating your colors uh, as you're painting there, okay? So I'm gonna come in and the more water I add, the more translucent it becomes. So just to kind of get the ball rolling, I can come in and you know already I know that that's not dark enough. So let's go ahead and get a little bit darker, maybe off in this little tray right here, this little mixing area here. So I'm gonna grab my red and some yellow. You could add a little violet or you could even throw a little black in there, but we don't wanna let black get become too much of a crutch. Um, if you get too much black in your color, it's gonna change the intensity of it. It's going to appear to be a um, uh, much grayer kind of painting than maybe you were hoping for. So um, even when we get to our portrait, be careful that you're not doing that. Now I've got a little bit of this color. It's mixed in with water here. Okay like so. Incidentally, if you have a clean brush somewhere, and let's say that you um, do something, and you're like, whoops, I don't like that, you can go ahead and take your paper towel, and you can eliminate a lot of that. You can't necessarily get back to the original color, but you can eliminate a lot of that um, pigment that you put down on there accidentally. So notice how often I'm going to my, uh, how often I'm going to my water, kind of just controlling my color here, coming down like so. Now, watercolor is gonna tend to be a little bit more modeled looking. And again, if you, got, if you became an expert, you, uh, you would be able to control that even more. You don't want your water to really pool too much. Notice how for now anyway, I'm just kind of staying in these lines here a little bit. If I get a little too, um, if my colors get a little off, I can add in a, an additional color to kind of break it up. So we get that kind of model look. If you really want to get technical, you could have a blow dryer, um, bring a blow, blow dryer in from the bathroom or something and you could uh, quickly dry your painting. You got to make sure that you're on low speed and you could use that blow dryer to dry your painting so that you can work wet on top of dry. As you're painting, you're going to notice your uh, paper is going to want to um, buckle a little bit. And that's just normal. Um, we didn't go through the process of kind of pre-stretching this. So um, you're going to get a little bit of uh, buckling in your paper. When you're all done, you can actually add a little water to the back of your, your um, sphere. And you can uh, level that out a bit. Okay, Just like we did with the oil, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to start with my darks here. So I'm gonna come in and just kinda get my initial darks going in my sphere. So again, I'm going back to my red, back to my yellow. So remember, the complement of blue is orange. So I'm knocking down that blue and creating a little bit more of a grayish blue coming through like this. And just getting my initial light and dark down. I like to be able to spin the paper around so that I can, you know, kind of control my angle of attack. Now we are leaving a little bit of an edge here, okay? 
if you're working like that, you can actually start introducing whites and notice how I'm like creating almost like a little offshoot of my palette right here. And let's see what effect that has on it. So if I want to get that cachet or that um, reflected light that we did, same thing we do with our watercolor or our um, oil painting, and come down here and go a little bit lighter. Remember, it's hard to reverse. <coughs> if you make something too dark, it's hard to reverse it with watercolor. So you got to be careful not to go too, um, too dark in an area where you would want it to be light. Okay. Now, in this case, I'm lighter than my cast shadow. I'm, I'm probably going to end up getting darker before this thing is done. But for now, um, I'm going to go ahead and start. Notice this, um, this little edge that I created. That right there, um, I can actually reconstitute. As long as I do it kind of now, um, I can start, start to reconstitute that. By reconstituting, I mean I can break up that, that line that was created there. Just like that, just like you did with your oil. You can even wipe your brush off, just like we talked about with, with the oil painting. If, it, if, you, if you overdo it, you can go back and let, grab some of your darker color and patch that in. We're gonna kinda work in layers, so let me just get my initial coat down here. Okay, we want to break up that little edge right there. Now I really want to get light. I don't want to get too dark because this is going to be my brightest part of my painting. So again, I'm using that kind of little swirled. Add a little bit of pigment to this over here. Not too much. And look at, I'm keeping that really bright part. Okay, so you can see that that sphere again is starting to emerge a little bit. Let's go ahead and add some water into this area here. And let's start putting in our, um, our horizon line. Okay, so I'm gonna start out with a very light color right there. Flipping my painting around. Okay, slowly we're going to add some pigment into this. And you're controlling most of that, just like you would with an oil painting. You're controlling a lot of that uh, at your palette. Not really at the painting, at your palette. And again, we get a little bit of that modeling, and if some of that bothers you, especially when you get to your portrait, you can always take your paper towel and kind of just dab it away, and then try to get back in there and repair it. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and I gotta make up a little bit more paint, so I'm gonna grab a little bit of my red and my, uh, and my blue. A little bit more red. We, we used a little bit of that violet. Okay, that's looking a little too violet. Complement of violet is yellow. Coming in there like that. So now I'm making kind of like a nice deep dark base color. As a matter of fact, while I'm at it, why don't I try to go back into here and deepen this a bit. Okay, watch what we can do this. We've got this color here. We might as well come in and deepen this up a little bit. Just like that. And then we can wipe our brush off like we do with the oil. And you can even do a little bit of dry brushing where you're just kind of going into that wet paint and you're trying to break up that, that edge there. And again, we can work on this more later. We can clean this up in a bit. Like so. And 
And again, just kind of coming in there and breaking this up a little bit. And we can soften that in a bit here, but let's just, I just want to take advantage of that color we had. And we can knock this out right here. If it starts to get too kind of mucky, you can always take that paper towel and just do a little bit of dabbing just to kind of get, get that color back out of there. We'll let that dry up for a bit. If you agitate your paper too long and for you know too many touches on it when it's real wet like that, you're gonna have a, a tendency to kind of start to break that paper up. So you gotta kind of leave it alone before you go back in and try to make your adjustments. So I'm just gonna put that in there. It's pretty forgiving once you get that, that kind of idea down there that you get to work on it for a little bit and then you sort of gotta back away from it. Okay, now we're here we are back in our skyline. Let's start it up here and try to merge the two. So let's get kind of a deep dark thing going here like so, like that. And then let's just slowly add a little bit of color, or, uh, water to that. Let's go over and do it right here. And then a spot where we need even, even less water, add a little bit of pigment over there. Okay, and we can see that starting to blend down there a little bit. Now I'm just gonna go straight water. You can see where I'm trying to reconstitute this down here. It's fighting me a little bit. I can take that paper towel, make sure your paper towel's clean. You know, and you can kind of dab a little bit of that away and get that to behave. Now, I want to get a little bit darker up in here. Before I do that, though, I'm going to add a little bit of um, color into my foreground here so that it's not just white. I'm going to get pretty... That's probably a little bit not, not quite enough. Something like that. Okay, we're, we're at least coming in and knocking out that, uh, that edge of that sphere right there wasn't quite dry enough. So you got to be careful with that. So we're just kind of coming in and adding a little bit of a tint here in the foreground. See, the cast shadow is pretty dry, so it's letting me paint next to it, whereas the sphere wasn't quite dry enough yet. So we just want to kind of tint that a little bit in here. working pretty quickly, allowing for a little bit of texture. Okay, you can kind of see where we're at right now. So let's go ahead and, and just hit this one more time now. I'm gonna, if I had a blow dryer or maybe 15 minutes, I might let this dry out a bit, but we'll see if we can't force it a little bit here for this video. So I'm gonna make up this color again. You don't wanna dig into these, into these little cups here. These are just for, meant for getting wet and, and getting your pigment going that way. So they're, they're watercolor, so you, you really wanna keep this kind of watery paint going, okay? Let me just see where I'm at. I can, I can see if I can't layer and get a little bit d deeper and darker on this cast shadow. Remember, this is not black. 
When I demo the portrait, I'll talk a little bit more about black. I'd actually probably suggest that you don't use black for this sphere here. Okay, so now I'm just in my second coat. You know, you could, in your portrait, this could take six, seven coats or layers. If you've ever worked with like Photoshop, you think about kind of layers. And there's that bleeding because that's still wet there. You just kind of fake that and fix that a little bit, just like that. But normally you don't get that if it's not real wet. So that little bleeding right there is just because I'm kind of rushing through this. Okay, so we get... Let's see if we can't get that to behave a little bit there. Okay. Get that to settle down a bit. Okay. We have this nice color here. It's kind of a violet. So I'm going to make a little bit more. Kind of like that. And again, we're going to go after this dark band here one more time. We can spin that around. Trying to stay in the lines here. Now again, I'm in this dark here. I can go ahead and start using water to soften this down a bit. And then I can transition out of this dark and start making my way up into the light. Got to kind of finesse it a little bit. Clean my brush off for a second here. See if I can use some of the paint that's already on here. Now it looks like I'm going to need a little bit. And once I do this and get through that layer there, now I can probably just go with straight water because I need to make my way into, into this really light area. Okay, so that water will let you just kind of grab from the value below or the tone below and drag it up into this, kind of like that. Now let's do it again with some fresh water. You want to make sure, just like you do with oil paint, you want to make sure you have paint on there, or water in this case. Okay, and then we're right up into here. I want to create a highlight. We're going to just do that. Okay, let's go down to this little spot here. And let's just do the same thing. Probably just get right into water again. Oh, no, we need a little bit of paint. You'll know it right away. Okay, this is that reflected light you remember from your oil painting. Okay. Sometimes you can even take your brush and just kind of pull away some of the pigment too. Right now, this area that I'm working on is really, really wet. And again, you might want to wait between coats. It's one of the nice things about watercolors. You can work uh, wet on dry. Let's just do a round here in the background. 
of the same idea quickly, and then we'll wrap it up here. So again, we're gonna make up our color here, get a, a lot of the good pigment going. Okay, a little more yellow. And let's go a little blue. Okay, so I got that deep dark color here now. So I can go ahead and start spreading that across here. Like so. And again, now as I go make my way down, a little bit more water, a little bit less pigment. I'm gonna flip this around here. Of course, just, just like the oil painting, if you slowed this down, you could probably have a little bit more control and do a little bit neater, cleaner job, which is what we're gonna be shooting for on that uh, portrait that we're doing. But this at least hopefully gives you some ideas to how to how to kind of approach it. I'm gonna get lighter here a little bit. Again, we're getting a little bit of that bleeding here that you can eliminate by Taking your time, letting it dry in between coats or layers. Okay, then we'll make our way down into this kind of final right at the horizon here. Like so. And just quickly, what time are we at there now? 27. Okay, and then just really quickly, the nice thing about watercolors, and I'll talk about this more with um, when we get to our uh, our portrait, but the kind of cool thing about it is, is you can come in and you can sort of add s some colors here and there, blues and things, and it's, this is probably not the right time to show you, but um, you can come in and you can kind of get some more colors to kind of shimmer out of there. You can see it happening a little bit with my cast shadow right there. Okay, and you can see little bleeds here and there that, you know, just the nature of moving kind of fast like this, you're just gonna get a little bit of that. And you can dab that out or you can just wait in between layers and, and prevent that. But um, otherwise, the sphere is always a great way to kind of get this idea going here and get comfortable working with, um, with watercolors. Um, I'll go over this a little bit more when we, um, when we do the portrait demo. But you can basically run this um, pan under your water in, in the sink, make sure that everything's out of the way. But you can kind of quickly clean out the, the different colors. You can clean out this side. Always clean your brush with soap and water, get it nice and clean again. Um, and then that way, and then maybe dab it dry a little bit or leave it open to dry. And then the next time you want to go paint, they're just right there for you. So this yellow, for example, that's all dirty, that's something you can clean off. You don't want to sit it, leave it underwater too long because you're just going to waste your paint. But you can get it kind of cleaned off and ready for your next session. So again, just to re um, recap, we're just kind of going dark to light again. Remember that your white or your lights are the color of the paper. So this is a transparent. I did not add white. This is the white paper coming through. Um, so remember, you have to sort of be careful um, that if you go over something that's supposed to be white, it's really almost impossible to recover from that. So really plan your approach out and make sure that the areas that you wanna be light um, are, are staying nice and light. Um, and then uh, your darks, you can work in layers. You can try to get them really dark really fast or you can slowly make them darker. 
just a reminder you can see some of this is still wet you could take a, a blow dryer on low and just kind of fan it back and forth and dry in between so it speeds up the process a little bit or if you have the time you can just kind of uh, let it dry on its own and go back this is puckering a little bit it might be hard to see um, when you're done with your painting you can put a, something heavy and flat on it and uh, and reshape that you can also put a little water on the back of the uh, painting and um, and that'll help a little bit too so um, this is just a little demo for you guys to start um, when you get your materials you can kind of play with a little bit so thanks for um, thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you on the next video